Okay, let's go ahead and begin here. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Let me know how the audio is sounding as well as let me know if the music is a little bit too loud. I have it turned down pretty low right now, but we can turn it down lower if need be. I am just making sure that the chat here is all set up and ready to go. So if you guys could say hi in chat, maybe shout out where you're watching from, and uh, we can get started here. So let's see. Angel, well thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Welcome. Hopefully you can hear me all right. Let me make sure we got that. So, uh, it's been a while since I've streamed here on the uh, Pixelogic ZBrush channel. Uh, so for those that don't know, my name is Ben DeAngelis. I go by Folygon in the digital sculpting communities here. Uh, if you guys want to check out my YouTube channel, it's Folygon, just like that. I'll go ahead and paste a link there in chat for you guys. And uh, if you guys want to check out my art station or anything like that, you can just Google Folygon uh, and you'll find all my, my stuff, including my uh, Gumroad, uh, where I sell all my courses, brushes, materials, uh, yada, yada, yada. Got some schmutz on my screen. Uh, check that out if you're interested in my brushes, materials, or anything like that. Uh, or check out the Appeal Academy if you're interested in getting some personal mentorship uh, from yours truly. Uh, this is my course where I go through the process of one-on-one -on -one training, uh, teaching the process of creating appealing shapes, thus creating appealing characters. Appeal.academy. And this, <clears throat> excuse me, is what we are going to be working on uh, for our stream here tonight. Uh, because I am limited on time though, I think we're just going to work on his little, his snoot, his head. Uh, this is from Janaic Draws. If you guys want to check out the artist and check out uh, some more of their stuff, they got a bunch of cute little puppers here. Uh, but we're going to be working on the, uh, the Bloodhound, I think is what this is. <clears throat> so, Genetic Draws, check them out. And again, if you guys want to check out my stuff, it is just Folygon. Uh, give it a goog, as they say. Cool! With that said, let's go ahead and get started in just a moment, making sure that you guys can hear me. Watching from Germany, awesome, welcome. Everything's sounding good, great. The second round for Hosen Diva is the, uh, I would assume that the stream uh, title is not updated, no worries. <clears throat> Let's see. Greetings from Argentina, welcome Daniel. Hope you're doing well, man. And Ecuador as well, hello, hello. Yes, I have no power to update the stream title myself, unfortunately. So no worries there. Not a huge deal. All right, so like I said, we're gonna work on this little guy's, or big guy, actually, his head. So actually, I'm gonna zoom that in a little bit. <clears throat> um, if we have time, we'll try to do a little bit of the body. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and start working here. As always, if you guys have any questions about what I'm working on, my process, or anything like that, feel free to stop me at any time. And you know what? I am in the mood for starting off with a little bit of color here on screen. I think it's fun to just start with a little bit of color every now and again. So we'll start here. This is a bit of an awkward angle to work from, so I'm just kind of <clears throat> wrapping my head around it a little bit. Let's see. So we're gonna block this out with a couple pieces of geometry. Just using some spheres, the first sphere for the base of the skull, the second sphere is going to be his nose here, which is just running down. We'll kinda deflate part of that. A lot of the time I don't like to start in color, so we might toggle this off for a moment simply because it occasionally gets a little tough to see if you start doing stuff like this and adding dark colors. Also just kind of depends on the material. All right, so I think what we'll do here is just grab another insert sphere. I'm using the IMM primitive brush. Just quickly dropping in a few pieces of geo. And we'll get that little nose in place. Feeling a bit like Pluto. I'm gonna turn down the music on my end. By the way, we're listening to Pop Sky. There's the spelling up there for those that are interested. 
going to be listening to him for our whole stream. He's got some really cool video gamey, kind of chiptune esque music. Really cool artist. I've been following him for a long time. And the guy is just unbelievable. Creates some amazing music. I'm a huge fan. All right, so I think what I'll do <clears throat> is probably like a little bit of the neck. Just like a little extension so that I have some of that. I typically don't like to model at an angle like this initially as well, but I think we're gonna have to make it work. If we wanna start blocking this out properly with that reference. So we could use like a cylinder or any like kind of tube brush, like a curved tube snap, which is kind of my go-to. But honestly, this is just faster to duplicate a sphere, stretch it out and go from there. So we'll start to get some more volume on this probably later. I think just having it as a placeholder for now is okay. And then later on what we'll do is start getting some of those folds. I actually chose this dog in particular because I thought it would be cool to attempt, I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but to attempt using some of the new uh, ZBrush 2021 dynamic features uh, for dynamically simulating some possible folds, some wrinkles, some of that more fleshy area around there. So we'll try it out, we'll see how it does. I, I'm not sure it'll work super well. Might require a lot of fiddling, but we can see, see what happens there. All right, we'll just continue to block out the rest of this. I don't typically use Z-spheres too often. I'm more of a just slap some primitive geometry, start blocking out some shapes. I'm trying to think if I've ever seen an actual purebred bloodhound in person. And I'm not sure if I have. I'm actually pretty bad with recognizing like or knowing the names of specific dog breeds. <clears throat> I know like a lot of the main ones. But like <laughs> I think that's a bloodhound. I'm pretty sure it is. Bloodhounder. For those that have played Apex at all. Alright, so this area is going to bridge the nose and pull up pretty high there. For the actual head. We'll have to start blocking in some eye sockets. And I think I'll sculpt the eyes closed like they are there. And we'll start getting in kind of that like capital M shape of the brow. It's a pretty cool shape. And this is really interesting. So you see how that line like follows all the way up through this direction? It like, uh, here, I'll grab the Damien standard and just carve in real quick. So it kind of like overlaps through that area. It creates a really, really cool overlap. It's a cool shape. We'll play with that. But for right now, it's, it's nice to just like block this stuff out really simple. I know it's like a tube and <laughs> looks pretty funny right now. I try, um, at least while I'm sculpting, I, I typically don't look at this stuff too closely. Uh, it's more of just trying to work quick and get the things on canvas. I love the way, I love the way that feels like the, the, the muzzle is like smushed on the ground. That's definitely something that I want to capture here. So like really kind of making sure that, that is flat and planed out there. I'm gonna also try, I'm normally really slow at sculpting when I'm talking too. I'm gonna try to work a little bit faster here. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> uh, Nardanesi, what's up? Welcome. How are you doing? I think you are looking at the wrong name. Misaki, what's going on? Welcome. Go ahead and dynamesh this. Keep going here. So for those who are not familiar with a lot of my work, I upload pretty frequently over on my YouTube channel, a bunch of different stuff, typically going through showing my full process, similar to what I'm doing now, but you know, obviously a lot more curated, a lot more clean, going through in maybe about 20 or 30 minutes or so, showing a full character. I didn't actually show off a very good uh, 
You know what, it's probably easier to go to Art Station, right? So that was the most recent character that I worked on with Chelsea Gracie, for those that are familiar with her and her YouTube channel. We worked on this as a collaboration. She created the 2D artwork, and I, obviously, the, uh, the 3D. So if we have time at the end, we'll open up one of those and maybe take uh, a look at that, and maybe dissect it a little bit if anybody has any questions about it. This thing needs to be dynameshed, this nasty little neck tube. And let's see, I think we need probably a bit more volume around this head. So like I said, we're pulling up that M shape, stretching down pretty low. We'll fill in some of this down here. And I'm going to merge these together in just a moment, the, uh, the muzzle and the, uh, the head skull. And the nose, we'll need to move that a little bit. That thing is pretty wide. I really like the, uh, the shape language used in this dog as well. There's a lot of really angular, cool features going on in the silhouette. And I love unique and cool silhouettes like this one. Alright, so I, I want to try to keep this pretty flat down here. I might even chop that a little higher just so we can, that's a little bit too high, just so we can kind of smooth that out a little bit. I pretty much always, I haven't really thought about this too much, but for those that are, you know, big ZBrush users, for the alternative smooth, I pretty much always use the alternative smooth. Uh, it's very rare that I actually use the normal smooth uh, function in ZBrush, which is just holding shift, right? I typically only use that if I'm trying to smooth something very strongly. A lot of the time I will use a uh, trim brush like what I'm using right now to kind of smooth out a surface. And then I will use my uh, alternative smoothing where you hold shift, start smoothing, and then let go of the shift key. So your other hand's just, you know, doing whatever. Uh, that is a great, great smooth function. I like it quite a bit more over the, uh, the standard. All right, so if we look at that silhouette, we can kind of see how that's curving right now. We don't want that to curve at all. We want that to be perfectly straight. And we actually want that to be quite a bit shorter. I'm trying to figure out exactly how that's working here in three-dimensional space. Probably need to analyze it just a little bit longer. This feels pretty straight to me. Kind of comes back a little bit, then forward. I'm someone that obsesses over silhouette. It's a stylized character artist. It's very important. Silhouette is one of the most important things, if not the most important thing for your work in sculpture, which seems a little strange, right? You're a 3D artist. And the most important thing is the 2D element of it almost. Hey, but that's just how it works. These need to be quite a bit closer together. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and merge these together and probably turn off some of the color for a little bit so we can sculpt a little bit more easily. Uh, also, I might want those polygroups, I don't know. And we'll toggle the ears back on very briefly. All right. So I just like to use Dynamesh for this kind of thing. Very quickly merge together. And eh, those polygroup merges are pretty nasty. So we probably won't keep those. It kind of comes down this way a little bit. I'm just going to look at this shape for a little. Try to figure this out a little more closely. Flung so down. Out in. This shape is very interesting. You can tell that this person probably has a really good understanding of human anatomy. That's actually the shape that you would see in the side planes. The musculature of the nose kind of creates this like pointed diamond shape. It's a pretty interesting choice. Play with that a little bit more. I like to keep things nice and sharp and hard during these early stages. We'll soften it later. No worries. Uh, great skills! Well, thank you, Takovetch. Appreciate it. Love your sculpt. Planning to get on ZBrush so that I can try doing it too. Awesome! Looking forward to it, Misaki. You should uh, definitely post your stuff online. Shoot me a tag and I'll check it out. Howard, welcome from Puerto Rico. I don't know how you duplicated the sphere so fast. Um, I either clicked duplicate or I just held the uh, control key while moving like that. Uh, so control key with either the 3D gizmo or transpose line and you can quickly 
control click and drag an object. Okay, so look at this. This is a pretty cool shape that's happening right here. So we go down and then out. Right now we're just going straight down, right? So we need to go down and out. Right about there. It's almost like it, that's like where it kind of smushes against the ground a little bit. I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. Let's see. I'll have to play with this for a little bit, try to figure it out. Slide that up. That'll come up too a little bit. So I'm keeping this pretty rough here in uh, Dynamesh. I'm gonna keep that pretty straight. I think this is gonna take a pretty hard bend at this stage right here. So I kinda want that to go from a straight and then straight again, if anything, so that I can match that silhouette. So down and out, one, two. Like I said, silhouette, very important, especially when you're talking about accurately representing your shape language. It's also why I don't have a perspective on right now. Those eyes, I like to jump around a lot while I sculpt as well. I don't like to stay in any one area too long. Not a great idea to do that. I'm gonna try to move around a lot, try to keep things at the same level of development. So we're just gonna get a little bit more form there. Whoops, that's not what we wanted. Wanted to trim that. So this forward edge, a little bit of a shadow under it, so it's like overhanging here. So we start to get some of that. Looking pretty good. Keep building that up. And then about here, see that cut in, coming down, and creating that larger M shape that we talked about earlier. And then this, like I said, this shape's pretty interesting, the way that overlaps there. Oh, got a little messy. I'll just maybe throw a subdiv in there real quick. And looking at that line, deciding what I want to do there. Keeping this pretty symmetrical for the time being. But that probably won't always be. Especially since this is not drawn symmetrically. And I think we'll kind of fade that edge out, pull that edge down. This shape's pretty messy so far. Let's see. I want to figure out what I want to do down here a little bit. All right, let's continue back up here to the head for just a moment. Let's grab our sharp soft brush, pull a little edge back. Give a little more volume around here. And do a very good job of splitting that, did I? Cut that up a little bit more. That's fine for now. It, it looks like the, uh, the head comes a bit to a, a point, and I know that dog heads from petting many, many a good dog out, do come to a bit of a crest. I'm not sure if that's uh, you know true with every breed, and I doubt that it is. It's very similar to what you would see with the uh, crest of a human's skull on the back of the head. It comes to a sharp point. It's oftentimes covered up by your trapezius muscle that flows up the neck though, and then a uh, bunch of fat. Bunch of neck fat. Bunch of neck fat. All right. Let's see. Let's pull these down. We're gonna slowly get more and more droopy, I think, as we go. I just need to get the basic shape in first. Uh, what I see is a lot of the time is like people, they try to get it perfect right away and that's really not how you should try to work most of the time. You should try to just get something into place and then, you know, start tweaking it and getting it where you want it to go. Because you're, you're trying to bite off more than you can chew all at once with that kind of strategy and workflow. It's a lot better in my opinion to just get something on your canvas, get something on your document, 
in ZBrush terminology, right? And then uh, you know, clean it up as you go, work on it as you go. Don't worry about it being perfect right away. And that's what I've done here with this edge. Like, look how thick that is, that distance right there. I'm not seeing that really represent. I'm seeing a little bit of that right there with that color change, transition. But, I mean, that's not going to be that thick. But I wanted to get that separation first, that, that plane change, before I started worrying about, you know, the proportions of it, getting it perfect. So that's how I like to think while I sculpt. We'll work on that more. But, as I said, we like to jump around a lot, so let's jump around a little more. Zofa, what's going on? Why don't you stream on Twitch anymore? I haven't streamed on Twitch in like all, uh, maybe two years. <laughs> maybe uh, definitely one year at least. But I stream on my YouTube channel every once in a while. Exactly the same thing. Just keep everything in the same place. Uh, for those that don't know who I am, my name is Ben or Folygon on the, uh, the YouTube land. You guys can check out my YouTube channel. Give it a goog. Check it out. Check out some cool character sculpts. Showing off the process from uh, beginning to end, which I really enjoy doing. And I don't stream super often here either, because I'm very, very, I'm too busy. <laughs> I'm too busy right now. Uh, more busy than I want to be a lot of the time. Uh, and then, you know, focusing on creating content for the YouTube channel. Those videos that I put out, the uh, 2D to 3D, like sculpting start to finish, those things take a long time. <laughs> I know the video is only like 20-ish minutes long, but it takes a really long time to produce those. A lot of work goes into them, so. But there's a new one for those that want to check it out over on my YouTube channel, where I sculpt a character with uh, Chelsea Gracie. It was a lot of fun. It was a really cool collab. You guys should check it out if you haven't seen it yet as I slowly get quieter and quieter. <laughs> this is what happens when I sculpt. I'm like slowly getting more and more in the zone. And then slowly, but surely, fade into nothing. Ah, uh, I'm so far behind on chat. Would you say it's easy to get into the Z Modeler feature in ZBrush? Absolutely. Especially if you go to my YouTube channel and search, or just search in the YouTube Search bar, Folygon Hard Surface Tutorial. Whoa, what just, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this is not what I want. What's happening? <laughs> I have no idea what just happened. That was a weird one. Pixelogic, if you're watching, what what just happened? Um, yeah, so search Hard Surface Folygon Tutorial, something like that, or Hard Surface Tutorial Folygon. You will find it. I go through a lot of the features with the Z Modeler brush, and then there's some uh, there's some new features as well that you know. Once you kind of know how to use the old stuff, the new stuff is even even nicer. There's some really cool stuff with the uh, 2021 update. I keep wanting to say 2020 because it is 2020, but it's the the new latest update. I'm I'm getting uh. What, what do we got? Getting a little laggy there. I'm just zoomed in a bit much there. We're getting a bit focused here on certain aspects of the face. I want to stay a bit more general, a little longer. So let's not let's not get too specific anywhere. Let's continue working with some of this. Hmm. Oh, I'm just gonna erase like all of this. This is all wrong. <laughs> this is all bad. Just make it all go away. Uh, Adina says you have some great stuff. Well, thank you, Adina. I appreciate that very much. It's very nice of you. And welcome. Welcome everybody who's just now hopping in to join us in chat. The uh, viewer number has been stuck for a long time, so I don't know how many people are actually here, but welcome if you're just hopping in to join us. Hope you're having a good evening, or maybe morning, depending on where you're watching. So this, like, 
takes a bit of a sharp edge turn that direction. And then we got the, the schnoz. The schnoz is the most important part of every sculpture. We all know this. I spend all my time sculpting the schnoz, and I only refer to it as the schnoz. There's no other name for it. What do I want to do there? Does that feel good? Does that feel like the, um, like the jowls? Kind of. A little bit. I think, I think that's what that surface turn is kind of representing a little bit more there. All right, so just making that a little sharper at first. Pull that back, be a little flatter on bottom. Mainly just using the move and pinch brush there. That feels pretty good, right? So he's starting to head in the right direction, looking a bit more blue houndy. A bit messy. We'll clean it up with time. Um, this edge back here, way too thick. Just looking at that edge. So I think what we'll do, we'll just do a quick mask. I also want to get rid of that roundness. Let me toggle off the ears. I don't have any subdivision levels. What have I been doing this whole time? Let's get some subdivs. Uh, so typically when I do this, I'll just, you know, Z remesh pretty low. The fact that I'm even doing two, the only reason I'm doing two is because I have like a little bit of a, an eye form blocked out there and I want enough geometry to block that out. I don't know if you guys just heard that big crack, but that was my ankle. <laughs> that was so loud. Um, Se Seagull Rush, what's going on? Welcome, welcome back. Or maybe you should be saying welcome back to me. Hello, how are you doing? How have you been? Project history. Let's project some history. Between us and ZBrush. George, thank you for coming in and saying hey. Glad you're still catching up on YouTube. Welcome. Be fun to see what the new dynamic features would do on the nose and the yes, that's what I'm planning. I think it would be cool. That's why I picked this dog, the big old saggy, saggy boy. If I had a bloodhound, his name would be Saggy Boy. This was not a good mask. So some fun fact about masking here and give you guys some deep ZBrush knowledge. So when you're blurring a mask in ZBrush, there are actually two blur algorithms that can occur. The first, which many of you are probably familiar with when you draw out a mask, is that you can hold the control key and tap on your surface and it blurs your mask for you, right? But the, the, the thing about that is it only blurs it in the direction of your mask. Um, here, I'll step up and it'll make it a little more obvious. So if I control click, see how it only blurs towards the mask there? And I'll undo that, step back to there. And instead, if you come down to the masking feature and click on blur mask, the hotkey, the control click doesn't actually do this function. This function blurs the mask both directions. So it blurs it towards the masked side and also towards the unmasked side. So it's a little bit of a different function. So there's there's that one, and watch. I have a hotkey set up for that blur mask button. You'll see how different it is. Boop, boop, boop. Very cool, very nice. So I actually wanted that mask to only blur one direction, but I'm a little muscle memoried into hitting Control B on my keyboard, which is a custom hotkey, but I am um, I'm useless with that without my custom UI hotkeys. Like, I'm so ingrained in my muscle memory at this point. This needs to be flatter on the bottom that it's hard for me to, like, whenever I try to use the standard ZBrush UI, I'm just, like, so used to, uh, to doing this. 
I'm gonna flatten this on bottom and then I think we're gonna create a separate lower jaw piece of geometry. I think it's gonna be pretty simple because I mean, I, one, we can't see anything there. So we're gonna have to make it up, but I, I don't think it'll be too hard. We'll just grab a sphere, grab this. And if I miss anything in chat, question or anything, just keep, just keep screaming it very loudly in chat so I can see it. <laughs> Um, let's see. Hey, hey, Diva. <laughs> yes, I think the, the stream title might be incorrect. No worries. Um, you thought that the Obi-Wan beard, the Ben Kenobi look. Yes, very nice, Obi-Wan. Uh, no, the beard is not coming back for a while, I don't think, at least. It's just so annoying to have facial hair. <laughs> but also it's so annoying to shave as well. There's nothing. There's no, there's no good medium. There's no good middle ground. All right. And then we'll kind of like blend that in, maybe do like a bit of a separation here. I don't want to spend too much time on this because like I said, it's not really seen from this main angle that we're kind of looking at here. We want to spend most of that time on the beauty, the beauty portion of our character, right? The beautiful face. Well, I'll show you guys something really cool with these folds as well. The, the, the wrinkles, the skin folds. Show you a cool workflow. So the idea is that he's smushing it. Smushing that, that schnoz. All right, so we'll dynamesh that together here in a moment. Let's take a look. Ears. So there's a bit more volume going on over here. Let's inflate that. And then a bit more in that direction. And then the connection there. Up, down, all around, out, in. Could try some dynamics on these ears, some of the new simulation stuff. A lot of the time though when I'm doing client work, it's so specific in terms of shape and form that some stuff you can't really, really do that on. Some of the more stylized, specific stuff. This is not turning over, come on. Mouth looks a little creepy. I think I'm gonna just make that a lot more thin. And blend that in in just a moment. Hey, he's starting to get somewhere. Uh, at this stage, I think we'll probably add some poly paint, keep it a little rough, and then uh, start with these wrinkles around the neck. I'll show you guys some cool stuff with that. Uh, yes, I use a lot of brushes that don't come with ZBrush. Uh, a lot of these brushes at the bottom are custom brushes uh, or variations of brushes that used to at one point exist in ZBrush or uh, variations on brushes that do still exist in ZBrush. So like my clay brush, I'll show you my clay brush really quick. I love my clay brush. So this is kind of what you would get with my clay brush. And then uh, I personally really like default wise for clay brushes. I really like the clay tubes brush a lot more uh, than the clay buildup. I've actually really grown to like the clay buildup uh, a bit more in maybe the past couple years than I used to. I don't like to recommend new artists use the clay buildup brush because it is hard to control, and that is because it's a bit destructive, right? It, it, builds up. It can build up and carve in like a ton if you're not careful. So uh, the clay tubes brush is a little bit easier to control. But uh, in terms of my brushes, yeah, I have a lot of, but uh, I have a bunch of custom brushes here. They're all available on uh, my Gumroad, gumroad.com slash Folygon, which I didn't share a link to at the beginning of the stream because I'm a goof. So there it is. Uh, that's where all my brushes, materials, courses, 
etc etc are which I think you can find it if you just Google Folygon. If you're watching the stream back later, just Google Folygon, you'll probably find it. Look at all that stretched, sexy geometry. Love, love the smell of stretched and broken geometry in the morning. Uh, honestly, I would even possibly consider making this one-sided geo uh, and then dynamically adding thickness. But with ears, wow, that is really stretched. <laughs> but with ears uh, around the base, you know, you get that canonical, like, the, well, the, <laughs> the ear canal, right? That folding, wrapping in shape that you'd expect to see. So it's a bit hard to get that, maybe, with just one-sided geo. But we might be able to do it with the new dynamic thickness stuff, which is pretty cool. I don't know if you guys have played with that. So dynamic thickness, I just need to go on a little tangent here about dynamic thickness. Because when I first saw it during uh, as a beta tester, I was like, "What is this? Like, why? Why would I ever use this? Why do I need this?" And then I started using it, and now I use it like for everything. Uh, I love dynamic thickness. It is like the uh, probably the most used feature that I use uh, out of the new uh, new tool set for 2021. I love dynamic thickness. It is amazing. So nice to have. I want dynamic everything. <laughs> Give me dynamic brushes, Pixelogic, that sculpt for me. I just want to watch, watch it all happen. I'll tell it what to do. <laughs> um, uh, have you tried the new retopology brush, uh, and do I recommend it? So I assume uh, that it's just a, here actually, I'll just look, because I'm sure it is. Oh, um, so I think what you're talking about, yeah, I, I thought so. So what you're talking about is the Z modeler brush with the ability to uh, snap edges to the surface of geometry. And I have played with it, and it is very nice. It's uh, super easy to use. I, uh, the new edge features, actually all the, so somebody was asking about the Z modeler stuff before and asking if it was easy to learn. It is very easy to learn, by the way, I'll repeat that. Um, but the uh, Z Modeler brush and the new features for it are very, very nice. The edge extrusion in particular, I love. I've been wanting that for a long time. And uh, we finally got it. So it's very fun to use. Lots of cool new features in this update for sure. Let's see. All right, we are doing great on time. So I think we're gonna add some color real quick. Uh, and then get to those folds, like I was saying here. But let me go ahead and grab some quick little color samples. Uh, first time seeing you on this channel, yes. I don't stream on here very often, but I have streamed on here many a time. Uh, but it's always a fun time. Grabbing some colors. I'm gonna plop some of this in. And I'm just gonna do some, whoops, some very rough, quick, rough and quick. Quick and rough. Rough. Oh no, I can already see the future puns coming from this. This was an old problem when I used to stream all the time. Too many puns. I would say one like accidentally, as I just did and that would open the floodgates. Please. Please, no puns. <laughs> no, not the puns. All right, I'm just adding some rough poly paint on here. Uh, color's very nice for just getting some value on your sculpt to help work with proportions. Uh, you have to be careful though, like the lighting, the, the lighter part that I'm putting on top of the head is a bit more of, um, you know, how they rendered the illustration. They put some light on it that's like, a, you know, top light shining down more so than anything. I don't want to, you know, overpaint highlights, overpaint shadows, anything like that. That's not really a super good use of your time. These ears getting dynameshed would be a great use of my time, though, wouldn't it? So we'll do that in a moment. 
some cool colors going on with this doggo. A little more saturated than you would expect. But some cool stuff all the same. You see me keep swapping back between 5 and 100. I, um, when, when painting on an actual sculpt, I tend to keep that pretty low with my paintbrush as I have found that uh, like 5 to 10, oh, let me restart that music, around 5 to 10 tends to be a pretty good value. Anything really uh, higher than that tends to be too strong. You still have to be pretty light with your pen though. Uh, okay, so for this neck, as I said, we get some rough poly paint on there. And she looking rough. And she's heading in the right direction. Uh, so I think what we're gonna do here, oh man, I keep seeing stuff that I wanna change in the face. This is how it works though. I just jump around a billion times. I'm like, we're gonna do this next. Seven years later. So that's starting to get a bit uh, a bit funky there. I'll clean that up. Just kind of adjusting that real quick. Come on. Be straight. Nudge, nudge, nudge. It does curl in ever so slightly. Okay, we will return to that. And now for some cool techniques with folds. I actually do the same technique on clothing uh, occasionally. It depends what the clothing is. Uh, but yeah, let me show you. So we're gonna duplicate that piece so that we can use a curve brush here. Let me draw that out really quick. So let me draw out one and show you some settings here. So under stroke curve uh, modifiers, if you turn on size and for the curve fall off, we're just gonna make a very simple little graph here going from small to large to small. We'll click on that to update it. You can see what that looks like. Uh, we'll, we'll probably make these ends just a little more thick though. And maybe a little, whoa, whoa, all right. So if you control or if you just click and drag off the uh, the screen there, the little graph, it'll delete your dot or your your little point there, so you can get rid of them. Also, I don't know if you guys know this, but any graph in here, these, this works with all of them. If you pull off and pull back on, it won't be uh, it'll be linear instead of um, curvy linear. So let me do that one more time because I do want that fall off. Blah. Trying to do that with my mouse. Should have done it with my tablet. All right, so there we go. That's like the basic stroke that we're looking for. We'll undo here and draw a couple of those on our neck, like so. And start using those for some of these folds. And what's great about curve brushes on the fly, you know, you can increase your draw size, decrease it, whatever you want to do there. It's all editable. You can play with it pretty quick, pretty nice stuff. So that's it. I'll show you more here in a second. Oh, my face was in the way. Dang it. Here. We'll hide my face. So uh, over here with the curve menu, you can grab your dot and drag it off screen, or you can drag it off and back on to make it a sharper transition, or drag it off and back on to make it nice and curvy. So that's the curve modifier size that I use there with the, uh, the little stroke there. Very handy, very nice for creating stuff that goes from small to large or any variation in between. Thank you for letting me know. See, I actually read chat and it helped us out. Um, Folygon is old school. I'm old school, oh no. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad it's helped you out, Raphael. Thank you, man. It's very kind of you. Um, let's see if I missed anything else. Let me know if I missed anything else in chat. I apologize if I did. Um, a lot of people are asking what happened to the beard. I haven't had the beard in a long time. 
Uh, for those that don't know, I also have a YouTube channel, and I still upload on there uh, pretty frequently. So check it out, youtube.com slash Follygon, Follygoon. I upload on there all the time. And you would know that I have this beautiful baby face underneath uh, that beard. Instead of making more folds, why would we do that? That's so much effort when we can use the power of technology and duplicate them. Amazing, I know. All right, we'll just use the smooth brush here a little bit. Let's see. It's actually some pretty like squared off shapes going on there. So some cool stuff with the, the, the skin folds. Uh, so he's like leaning down, right? And that's why those folds are like pushing uh, against his head. So we'll try to get that effect here. I don't really have this angled actually quite where we want it. So we'll adjust that angle in just a moment. That'll be very important because it affects the gravity, the direction in which these objects are going. And it might affect the actual gravity if we play around with some dynamics. I have a feeling though, it might require a bit more tweaking than we have time for to get uh, the desired effect. But who knows? <laughs> we might be able to create some fun stuff. Uh, and then back here, I'm just going to use my clay brush and build that up. Uh, and we'll need to get some more volume underneath that head as well, a little bit flat. Let's check out the angle. So we're heading in the right direction. Let's go ahead and, um, hmm. You know, I was gonna say merge that together. Let's see, let's get our sub tools figured out here. Let's see if we can just do a quick little rotate up. Something like that. I actually am liking that silhouette swooping down, getting a nice S curve there. Some cool stuff. We're just looking at that. It looks pretty awkward without the ears. <laughs> but let's um let's merge this together. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> kind of want to keep those asymmetrical. Maybe it won't be too too much of a problem there. Hmm. I'll do that symmetrically for now, just so we can merge this together. Keep working on that. So we got the head, this does have subdivs on it, but we're gonna merge it in Dynamesh here in just a moment. Let's see, what else do we wanna change right before we do that? I think the, uh, the whole nose here is maybe just a bit too long. It's not a fun look. Let's kind of get that placed a little bit better. I think that feels a little, little thick. I don't know. We'll see in a moment. And I'm gonna have to blend this a little bit better as well. All right, let's get that neck on here, on this head. Do a quick little merge down. Do a quick Dynamesh. What are we at, three? Almost 400. It's more than enough for where we're at. And now uh, that next part of the process here with those tubes of geometry that you slap on here, you can start blending them. You know, with all sorts of different brushes, I'll use my clay brush a lot. I'm just keeping them symmetrical for now. You can also use masking to your benefit. I like to use that uh, mask lasso quite a lot. Pretty easy to use, do some quick masks. If you guys aren't familiar with mech brushes, there are some really great mech brushes you can download from the Pixel Logic website. I have my own here that I love and use for almost everything. Really great for block out as well as refinement and polishing here a little bit more. All right, we gotta make some progress here. Don't wanna slow down too much, 
check on him in perspective. We might be able to do a little bit of the body, you know, just a little block out. But for the most part, a lot of our focus here is on the head. We might get, we might get a little frisky. Start doing some of the body. We'll see. I just know that somebody's streaming right after me. So I'll have to hop off pretty quick. Alright, make sure we got that ear canal looking pretty good. Heading in the right direction. There's some form going this way. That I can see with this edge. Alright. And this ear is such a mess. It's so stretched. I haven't even touched the geometry, so we'll dynamesh it. And, hmm. I was thinking maybe some dynamic thickness to play with that. Let's see. Try to flatten this a little bit better here. Ruh -ro. Getting some thin parts. I like to use the uh, back mask, back mask, the back face masking feature with that a lot. It's very helpful with the move brush. It's under brush auto masking. If you guys aren't familiar. Yeah, we'll make that flatter here in a moment. Uh, what is your texturing software? Uh, I uh, mainly sculpt. I pretty much exclusively sculpt here. So if I'm adding texture, I'm adding it in ZBrush. But substance, if I'm going to use anything, is where I'm going to head. as of right now. Raphael says, should I worry about topology? Right when, uh, right from the start when I'm learning the basics of sculpting, anatomy, and stuff. No, I wouldn't worry about topology too much. The only uh, real concern there is to make sure that your geometry or topology is sculptable. So, so as long as you have something that you can work with, you are gonna be you know, in a good spot. So if your focus is working on form, uh, have that be your focus. Don't worry about the technical uh, in terms of you know getting something animation ready right away, unless that is something that you also want to focus on at the same time. Otherwise, you're you know you're biting off a lot more than I think is worth uh, worth kind of focusing on all at one time. Don't want to stretch yourself too thin. But yeah, knowing the uh, proper flow of geometry for something that's going to be animated is very helpful. Get them double edges in there. Hello, Bugra, welcome. I do not play Dota, no. I have created a character from Dota, though. Uh, it was mainly that I saw some really cool fan art. I can't remember the artist's name, but it's on that art station post. Combine this, lower jaw piece, lower jowl. I'm using my sharp soft brush. Like a soft kind of Damien standard soft sharp, soft sharp standard brush. Hence why it's called my sharp soft brush. <laughs> Get a nice little push in there. Rough mouth cavity. I often don't like to have smooth on with uh, for RGB. Kind of creates some nasty stuff. But right now it's fine. <laughs> right here, this angle. This angle is beautiful. Just kind of looks like a fish. I love it. We'll uh, we'll get some more volume down here. Don't worry. Kind of round it out. Uh, the character was, 
Ilia? Lilia? <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, oh, no, wait, no. It was uh, Enchantress. Enchantress. And then um, right after I worked on that, they re uh, like, the week after I worked on this character, they released um, Ilia or Lilia or something. It's like a Servidae, you know, half deer, half human character. And everybody's like, oh, wow, you came up with the idea before they did. I'm like, well, no. <laughs> it's just, you know, another similar type of character. I don't know what the new character is. I don't, I don't play Dota, so I don't know their names. Whoever the newest character is. Good morning from Nepal. Just starting the day. Oh, man. I am nearing the end. Get a little bit of a separation there. Even that out some. We're gonna get some more volume here too. So I'm having trouble seeing what's going on with this form here because of the, the poly paint. I'm gonna toggle that off for just a moment. It's kind of hard to see sometimes. Kind of hard to find the brush you want too. Color is very important, especially on something like this, with all those very contrasty parts between light and dark. Okay, we're getting there, heading in the right direction. Probably do a bit more squash. Uh, the we kind of lost the uh, the crown of the head that I was talking about earlier, if you guys remember. So let's see, how can I do this? I think I'll just pull back, push down, pull up here. That's what I'm looking for. That that hit right there, the crown of the head. And then uh, let's see, this is I think way too far back. The location of those ears. Let's turn off perspective for a moment. We'll remesh some ears real fast. Lilia! Thank you. What did I say? Ilya? I was close. <laughs> Do a quick little projection. Yes, with poly paint, of course. Um, from League of Legends. Ah, see, I don't, I don't play these games. <laughs> um, no worries, Raphael. You have a great rest of your night, and I will see you next time. Bristleback. I'm not familiar with Bristleback. I will have to look Bristleback up. He sounds like a cool character. Bristleback. He sounds like he's probably like a porcupine something, if I had to guess. Based on the name. Really just trying to get this uh, to be a bit more accurate. Get the kind of uh, that folded over look right here. The, in all honesty, like, uh, oh, whoops. Um, masking is really, really nice for this kind of stuff. We're just like creating uh, some really hard turns for a fold. So just create a hard mask and then just take your geometry and give it a push, like so. Just like this. And I'll actually uh, make this kind of rotate a little bit so that it's a bit more 
wrapped like so. And then uh, all you have to do is come through this sharp edge, smooth it out, and you'll get that kind of uh, overlapping effect there. And you can, you know, make it stronger if you want. Push it back over, like so. The, uh, the volume that I have here is very uneven, which is why I was thinking of using dynamic sim, or I'm sorry, dynamic thickness. We can maybe do that. Let's see, I'm gonna go a little thinner, a little more thin. Wow, look at that guy. He's looking like a very good boy. All right, uh, I'm gonna remesh this real quick. Uh, how was the move? Yes, I recently moved and it was very hard. <laughs> Moving sucks. Moving is never, never fun. Uh, but all settled in now, new office. I don't know if you guys can hear, let me see. This will be all the, the foam up on the wall, etc. back behind me. Hello. I'm not sure why my camera's cut off there. It shouldn't be. Oh well. <laughs> but yes, um, got all the foam set up so that the audio doesn't sound absolutely horrible. This room was very echoey <laughs> originally. Uh, much better now. Uh, but yes, all, all settled in. Moving is a lot of work. Uh, let me fix this up. And do some projections. One more, should be more than enough. And we'll start getting this to be a little bit more specifically close to our reference there. Now that we have some pieces combined, a little bit more. Or these eyes. You know what? Let's get this thickness figured out a little bit more. I love uh, <laughs> turning off the ears. This thing looks so so goofy. Kind of looks like um uh, like a platypus or something. We'll uh, I'll mess with the um the thickness down there too because it just feels pretty funny. <laughs> it's a cool shape though. Oh, and by the way, here, I'll, I'll really quick uh, shout out the artist once again, Janiac Draws. If you guys are looking for some, some cool practice, she has a bunch of uh, dogs uh, that they drew recently. Uh, all sorts of different types of dog breeds that are very fun. So if you're looking for some practice with some fur, this one would be a fun challenge. This one has some cool shapes as well. I think that's... Uh, I'm not sure if that's a Samoyed or what, but um, yeah, so some very cute doggos, obviously working on this one right now. I need to get that to be a bit smaller here. Let's see, can I make this a bit more rounded without wrecking everything else? Oh, such droopy, tired eyes. This is how I feel right now. <laughs> That's why I sculpted this this little dog. It's like this is how I feel. I'm just gonna use my cube tube brush and do a quick little eyelash. Just representing that black line. Oh, you thinned out the wrong way. That's okay. This is not what I wanted. I wanted it to go the other direction. That's okay. 
Actually, I'll just uh, delete some of these edges real fast and we should be fine. I think I'll keep one little loop in the middle. And, uh, yeah, this should work. And just taper it down. Yes. Taper down. A little bit wider in the middle. Z modeler brush. Oh, I was going to crease that. Oh, I still will. Here. So crease, edge loop. Crease, crease. Crease, please, yes. Get your creases. All right. Very quickly. That's pretty much the effect we want. I just want to make that a bit more accurate in terms of placement. As it's sticking out pretty far over here. We'll do that, pull forward. Get a little pull up. And that should do the trick. Let me angle this back on the, the back side a little bit more. I hate uh, doing too much poly modeling here on streams because I know it's very boring to watch, so I try to go through it pretty quick. That actually is not really what I wanted too much of. There we go. Hmm. Make models. What a fun name. Well, thank you. Yeah, he's getting there. We're at an hour and five, so we got some more time work on this, get it a little bit better. He looks like one form of Mothra without the ears on. <laughs> Is there like a caterpillar version of Mothra? Like a... <laughs> I wish there was a dog breed that had like super, super tiny ears that just looked like this. It's a snake, dog snake. We should be breeding dog snakes. Been saying this forever. No one listens. It's a great idea. <laughs> All right, that mouth shape's pretty boring. So, you know, he's gonna be a smiling pupper, of course, because he's very happy about the scent that he found, picking up the scent of blood, because he's a bloodhound. I wonder what the origin of bloodhound is. I should look up that etymology. So if you can see a little bit of the corner of the mouth there, that should be fine. The, uh, the way that's drooping down is actually a little bit of an awkward transition going from uh, brow to corner of mouth there. I feel like maybe we could stand to uh, like pull this in or something to hide that. Having that very close feels uh, a bit strange. So left side we're good, right side I think we just need to... The way this is drawn it's just not a uh not possible in 3D. Looking at the right side of the silhouette, how that comes down, uh, so it goes one, two, three. So down the eye, down the, the schnoz, and out. And then over here, it's just one, two. A bit of an, uh, an awkward transition. We'll make it work though. We'll find a nice in-between. When there's something like that, I try to get a little bit of both sides in if I can, but whatever feels more natural is what I'll gravitate towards. Because it has to make sense in 3D at the end of the day.
What's going on, Chris? How you doing? Welcome. That's right. I'm here. It's a Folygon stream. But uh, for those that follow me over on my YouTube channel, I've actually been streaming uh, a bit more. I've just been doing some chill kind of morning streams. Not really talking too much, just kind of uh, focusing on sculpting a bit more. A little bit more self-gratifying. <laughs> but uh, if you want to come hang out, listen to some chill music, do some sculpting, it's always fun. Uh, but I've been using them for kind of just, you know, chill sessions for myself. Chill sessions for uh, some practice, working on different things. I did another doggo, I did a chihuahua, which, let me see if I have the chihuahua close by. Yes. Oh. So I did a quick little chihuahua in a couple hours, really creating some hard angular forms there. It was pretty fun to work on. Um, it's very hard to sculpt a full pupper in just two hours though. So uh, I would not recommend it. <laughs> uh, that's why we're kind of during this session, especially since I'm talking and I am very slow at sculpting and talking at the same time. That is why we're focusing in on this head and making it look very nice. You know, spend a, spend a bit more time here, especially on that silhouette. Starting to create some cool shapes, get these uh, edges to really flow in a nice way. Getting some cool stuff here for sure. And it'll leave us enough time to play with some dynamics, which is always fun. The new dynamic stuff is really cool. So stick around, the fun stuff is yet to come. Although, for me, the sculpting is the fun stuff. What's, what's wrong with my smooth brush? Why is my smooth brush at 25? How did that happen? Who did that? Not me. I would never. All right, I think we're getting pretty close to where I want to be for a lot of the basic forms here in the face. A little bit too sharp in a couple areas. So as you're moving forward, of course, from you know block out into refinement, a lot of what you're doing is taking those primary forms and continuing to work them, and working them more into an organic state. Because during that block out phase, you have a lot of hard, planar, uh, sharp edges, and those tend to feel really awkward if you're trying to sculpt something organic, right? So you gotta really start heading more in that organic direction. And that requires, uh, you know, taking those really sharp edges, like I have in a couple areas, and starting to organify them, which is the technical term, the, the sculpting term that everyone uses. Trust me. We're just trying to clean this up a little, make it feel a bit more fleshy, a little bit more organic. Organify. Organified, I should say. in some of these inflated areas, feeling pretty good. Give a little bit more gesture in some of these shapes around the eyes. Some of that's still pretty messy, isn't it? I, I love this overlap. I was talking about this uh, at the beginning of the stream, though starting to get that. There's our awkward little Mothra friend. Let's get in here, create a quick mask. I'm gonna get this edge to be pretty, pretty straight from this angle. I'm pretty thin, I want it to be more thin up there. Ugh, just a little. This nose, this big old schnoz is in the way. And what I wanna do Grab this and start overlapping it. And it's going to be the same technique that I used on the ear to get that 
fold here, this overlap. And just kind of masking off the one area, nudging it over with the move brush. A little bit of smooth. Deflate this area a little. All right, it's starting to work. Uh-oh, starting to lose a little bit of this, aren't we? Quarantine is fine for me. Um, my life actually hasn't changed very much. As I hang out on the computer, sculpting uh, quite a lot. So that really hasn't changed all that much for me. So it's been fine. Not too bad at all. Um, looks kind of like your dog. Do you have a bloodhound? I've seen bloodhounds on TV and shows and stuff and online. I've never, I don't think I've seen one in person. I wonder if it's like a rare, rare breed of dog. Or maybe I just don't live like in the country enough. Maybe it's more of a country dog. All right, so that brow, see how far forward that is from the profile? We definitely need to shift that back. So let's grab our move brush. Or you know what? Actually, let's pull the uh, outside forward a bit more. If we can get even more overlap there, I think that would create a pretty cool shape. So those eyes are like really sunken in. Oh yeah, I'm starting to like that actual curve there. I'm gonna pull forward with the brow. This is what I like doing. I like experimenting, finding those cool shapes there. I think I've maybe exaggerated that angle a little too much. I'm gonna push, uh, push that just a little bit more, kind of rotate it in just a smidge. You know what? I think I'm probably gonna make that a bit more narrow there too. Very messy eyelids, but we did it a pretty quick and dirty way. I've been doing that a lot with eyes lately, and then I just clean them up later. The ways I've done it in the past, a lot of the time I'll spend a long time creating hyper clean eyelids. And anymore, I'm just like, I just try to do it super quick. It's just not worth the, uh, the amount of time typically, especially when I just remesh them later. Or do some new topo there. Where'd our music go? Come back. There we go. Oh, the Chihuahua looked a bit more like your dog. Chihuahuas are pretty common. And there's a lot of Chihuahua mixed breeds as well. Oh yeah, I like this shape a lot. This is starting to come really cool here. Ooh, yeah, I'm liking that. Some fun stuff going on there. This needs a bit more volume on that edge though. Uh-oh, got a fly. Go away. Uh, how do you get pinched edges clean without uh, moving too much geometry? 
you uh, you move a lot of geometry. That's what you do. You're sculpting. Don't worry about it. If you want to use a pinch brush, or yeah, if you if you want to use a pinch brush, you're gonna you're gonna pinch geometry. That's just the natural result of what a pinch brush does. If you don't want that effect, then you should use a different brush. Uh, but I love pinch brushes. I think pinch brushes are amazing. So don't worry about the geometry getting you know crazy. You can z remesh it and clean it up later if need be. But if you're you know if you already have like a the topology that you want and then you're trying to use a pinch brush, you're you're working backwards. You don't want to do that. If you want to use a pinch brush, for the most part, that's the way to do it. There are other ways. There's like a little bit of a workaround that you can use with projection, but it's a little bit backwards. It's kind of a, a big time sink for just a pinch effect. So in my opinion, it's not worth it. But the essential idea is that you know you sculpt and use the pinch brush exactly how you need it. You just kind of do whatever you need. And then uh, when you're ready, so here, here's an example. Uh, so for, for example, through here, whoops, wrong brush, Let me grab a pinch, through here, if I pinched this up because I wanted this really sharp edge, which I don't, but let's say I did right there, uh, obviously that geometry is way too pinched and messing up the topology that I want really bad. So what you would do is uh, you could uh, store this place in history or duplicate it to save it for a projection and then you'd go back to the clean geometry and uh, project that form onto the other one. Um, this is pretty stretched. I use the pinch brush uh, very strongly there, so the projection might be, uh, it might also get pretty messed up through that area, uh, or it might not even recognize it. But actually there, it actually did a pretty good job. So uh, it pinched, as you can see, it pinched that geometry up into that shape, but the topology has not, uh, than that. <laughs> so that's how uh, I would recommend going about that process. Uh, again, projection. Projection is your friend. Project all the things. I use projection all the time. But in general, I would say uh, kill this fly. That's what I would say. Um, I would say don't, don't worry about your geometry while you're sculpting too much. Let's get that. Get what you need. Focus on the creativity part. All right. So what I'm thinking is I am going to finish up this nose. Uh, maybe do a little bit more with the ears. Uh, merge it all together. And then we're going to play with some dynamics because we have time to do so. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this nose and not have the nose go inside the mouth. That's not correct. And actually, let's um, let's increase the thickness of this area. So the, uh, the like jowl area, make that mouth, um, the bottom jaw more thin, more narrow, and the uh, jowl a bit more, a bit more thick. So I think that makes a bit more sense. Let's try one more mask there, something like that. There we go. And then for the nose, let's see here. Clean this up a little bit, try to get that main shape. I haven't touched this since I threw a sphere in there and just pinched an edge. So uh, we'll just clean this up really quick for the main shape. Make sure that top edge is transi transitioning well. Wow, I don't know what that was, mini stroke. Let's see, clean this up. I also want to get a little more shape there. Let's see. Uh, will you do another Pass the Sculpt with Shane? That would be a lot of fun. Uh, we actually never finished unfortunately uh, either of our 
our, our sculpts. And that was because Shane was moving at the time, ironically. And uh, <laughs> this now I just moved, so. Uh, maybe now, maybe now we can finish what we started eons ago. Uh, that'd be fun. But it's just a matter of finding a, a time where both of our schedules kind of work out. But yes, I would love to. We never, we could either finish that last one, might be more fun to start something new. I don't know. I will have to talk to him. See what old Shaney boy's up to. Um, of course, happy to help, Alpha. So, I'm thinking that I will just use my... Ah, oh, man, I want that. Let's just switch our light. You know what? No. All the poly paint goes away, because I can't see. There we go. Wow, he's a beautiful little, little snake. Snake dog. Just a neck and a head. Alright, let's adjust this shape a little bit. So, uh, dog noses, at least for most breeds kind of a bit more of this like diamond or triangular shape towards the bottom. Uh, not this thick, it needs to blend in uh, quite a bit nicer. So let's do that. The trim brush, a little more volume, soften some of that. Let me turn on solo mode for just a moment. Uh, for you, at home that do not know about solo mode in ZBrush, you guys should be using solo mode. It's amazing, I use it all the time. Solo mode is this little button down here. It toggles on and off all subtools visibly, except for the one that you currently have selected. I use it almost like every other keystroke. <laughs> not quite. Um, but it's very useful, a nice little tool. I highly recommend setting solo mode to hockey. And it doesn't actually toggle off the visibility, it's more just kind of hiding the stuff. So if you're working with projections and you have two objects visible that you're projecting from one to another, you can actually turn on solo mode and still project between those two objects, which is very nice. A little more deep ZBrush knowledge. Yes, ask me your deepest ZBrush questions, and I shall answer them from the well of Z knowledge. I discovered it eons ago. <laughs> it's called the documentation. <laughs> and I, I, honestly, there's, I, there's some stuff I, I think that probably isn't even in there. Like every little transpose function I don't think is in the documentation, but I have a video on it. Okay. I think we're good to do some nostrils. And I can't really see any nostrils on him, so we're going to make it up. Can't be too hard, right? So let's just do kind of a rounded shape here. And let's see brush crash. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. <laughs> but we should have uh, recovered. A quick save. It looked like we did. Uh, again, for those that are just joining us, welcome, welcome to the stream, Pixelogic ZBrush channel. My name is Ben, I go by Polygon in the digital sculpting community. Check out my YouTube channel if you're new around here, uh, where I have some cool start to finish ZBrush sculpts. Why is that not opening? That was weird. Um, where I have some cool start to finish ZBrush sculpts, my uh, 2D to 3D seri series, it's pretty fun. Get that recovered Z tool there. Doesn't look like we lost anything. Perfect. Uh, as well as check out my Gumroad, gumroad.com slash polygon, for all my brushes, materials, courses, etc. etc. Um let's see. So we didn't really lose any progress there. But we 
do one to our spotlight tool back. Our little reference image there. And we're more so just focusing in on the uh, the head. We'll pull that back up. And we're back. That's what we love about ZBrush, right? Quick save. Never have to worry about crashes for too long. Um, yes, it's not a folly gone stream without at least one good crash, but I, I can't remember the last time I lost any progress on a crash. Actually, I can. Uh, I take that back. It was... Uh, what character was it? It might have been my athletic girl sculpt. I think it was. Uh, where my power actually went out. Lightning struck really close by. And uh, the power went out. And because of that, I lost, God forbid, like 15... 10, 15 minutes of work. <laughs> so really not a huge deal, but yeah, it can be frustrating sometimes. Uh, I might squish that nose a little bit more. I really want that, you know, like squashed effect on the ground. That feels a little bit, a little bit more squished. Uh, I didn't push these in far enough, did I? That's okay. I'm just kind of Give him a nice squeeze. My watch is telling me, you need to stand up. You've been sitting down too long. My watch tells me that a lot. <laughs> when I'm here in ZBrush, at least it does. All right, that'll do for now. That'll do. Poly paint back for the nose. Awesome. Uh, and then I think I would prefer to play with dynamics more so than uh, do like any body or anything for this because I mean, that's just going to be like the same process that we did on the head, just more of the same thing of block out than refinement. So let's play around with dynamics, especially since you know some new uh, new ZBrush features, right? It's always fun. So I wanted to try doing some of that around the, the neck rolls. I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit more while I talk. Some of that around like the neck rolls, maybe, maybe the ears as well. I think a lot of it's gonna be more, <laughs> more silly than anything. Uh, Cause I think it'll take a while to probably get anything that looks, you know, decent. Let me just do a little more rough up here. Keeping just everything symmetrical for a little bit. One fun thing that you can do if you're trying to blend some colors with your smooth brush, just turn off Z add. And then just go in on the poly paint and smooth it out. You can blend your poly paint like so. I don't like that red that's coming through there, though. I'll grab a very, very low RGB intensity. It's kind of a, like, you know, there's like some texture there. It's like speckled almost. So we could achieve that uh, with some spray or something like that. Spray and Alpha 7, 07, some of that sprayed effect like so. Get a little bit of that in there, maybe. And typically, uh, if I'm doing something like that, I like to do it really small, as it uh, it gets blown out pretty easily. Clean some of that up. A little bit of a strong effect there. All right, he's a cute little pupper. Let's uh, let's try some dynamics, maybe around the neck 
first. Uh, which I've already sculpted some of these folds, but um, yeah, we'll see what we can do. So I'm going to, I think, duplicate my... Oh, you know what? Let's, um, I do want to merge those ears to the head as well. That's eh, fine. We won't worry about the ears. They're not going anywhere. So what I would like to do, I think, is test this out on a low-res piece uh, for testing purposes. So I just have like the low res test here and I'll even turn off symmetry on it uh, because I think it's going to be uh, a lot easier. It's going to calculate, you know, a lot faster, etc. So what I'll do first, let's start off with um, changing the angle of the neck, rotating it up a little bit more, something like that. And let's grab our dynamics menu. All right, so let's see. What do we want here? We want some stuff. I think floor collisions actually would be pretty cool for trying to, um, let's see, where's our floor? I never turned the floor on. Uh, for trying to get like the ears to lay on the floor properly, I think that would be pretty sweet. I'm gonna move my floor. Yes, you can do that. You can move the floor. <laughs> All right, so the floor is just like the lowest point of your uh, geometry there. So I think we could try some dynamic stuff with the ears as well, get those flopping on the ground. That'll be pretty cool. So we're gonna use gravity. We're gonna keep the strength where it is. We'll try the firmness at the default of three. We might change that though. Actually, I'm gonna put that on two for now. Um, let's see. No, we don't want allow shrink. We don't want allow expand. We also want to store a morph target so that uh, the geometry or scale of the geometry doesn't stretch and get bigger. If you don't store a morph target before you do this, it'll uh, become a, a bit of a mess. All right, inflate, deflate, all that's fine. Uh, we'll make this a collision volume. Yes, please. And we will just do a little run sim test. Beautiful. That is exactly what we wanted. All right. So we are going to turn off the ears. We're going to turn off the nose and those little lash pieces that we wanted there. Uh, recalc. Okay, we'll turn off collision volume since we're not colliding with anything. Ooh, okay, I like it. So we're too uh, we're too soft there. We'll adjust the firmness. Right now, I'm just trying to get uh, get my like firmness figured out. All right. So what we'll do next is try a little test with some masking. All right, so right now we're just trying to like figure out our settings, you know, find a good, find something good for uh, for this. Let's see. Turn on dynamic. Okay, I think we're still a little too, uh, a little too soft. What do you guys think? A little more firmness. Like that. Okay, that's starting to feel like it's heading in the right, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, that's heading in the right direction. So now we can actually play with um, some of the cloth brushes as well, instead of just running a simulation. You can also just straight up uh, rotate your model like so, and click on, where is it? Set direction, and now the uh, actual geometry will go like so. Uh, but we don't have self-collision on. Self-collision definitely needs to be on. Self-collision should almost always be on. I think it should be on by default, in my opinion. I don't know. I guess there's some stuff like some liquid maybe simulations would be better without self-collision. That's starting to look cool. Um, maybe some inflate as well might help us out. Heading in the right direction. Let's try the default there of one. Okay, let's make that a bit more. 
Whoa, 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 okay, too much inflate, okay, two seems to be pretty good, that seems to work, yeah, 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 I like that, that's pretty cool, let me see, let's turn some stuff on, go, oh yeah, we could really smush that face, <laughs> I love that. Uh, smush it right into the ground. We just keep keep it going. Keep going. Keep going, doggy. Oh, that is ew, that is nasty. Simulation stuff is so fun here. I love uh, love that tool set. Really cool. Uh, but I really like the uh, the uh, general placement and setting that we found there with all that. I'm just creating a quick little poly group. So again, this is the uh, the test piece. I've just duplicated this, and I'm using the low res geometry to uh, figure out the settings that we want to play with. And now I'm going to start playing with some cloth brushes as well. But I'm going to do that on, uh, whoops, I meant to hit delete there, on the uh, original piece of geometry here, which has subdivision levels. Uh, let's see, yes, perfect. It's that first one where it's just smushed. It's exactly what we wanted. What's up, Devin? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. All right, let's uh, let's try this on the. Whoa, whoa, that was weird. Now stop working. Let's try this on the ears as well. So what we're gonna do is set direction. Do a quick little mask on the ears. And we want. We actually want. Uh, where is it? Yes, floor collision is on, okay. Our uh, geometry is quite a bit too high. Res there, which is fine. Hopefully the stream isn't lagging too much. Oh, we do not want inflate on this, by the way. We will not want inflate for that. Uh, but I think what we're gonna do is lower the res of the geometry because honestly there's not a lot of form going on here and it should be fine without uh, also I'm gonna add some asymmetry to these ears really fast uh, too uniform so let's um, we'll just add some quick little nudges nothing too crazy Maybe a little twist. All right, that should be good. A little blur of the mask. We don't really even need those lower subdivs. We have pretty low geometry level. Run sim, all right, so there we go. We got that going. We wanna store a morph target on these ears. Again, the reason you do this is so that the geometry doesn't expand uh, it tries its best to retain its main shape. Plus, we can actually use the uh, morph target if we would like to uh, uh, kind of flow back and forth between one state and the other. So it's pretty cool for that as well. Marco, hello. How is Chile? How are you doing in Chile? Uh, artists that I find inspiration from. Well, I would go to my art station, artstation.com slash polygon, and go to following. I follow 762 people on ArtStation. It's quite a lot. And there's a ton of artists that uh, I, I pull inspiration from, uh, including a lot of the people that I've created uh, some artwork from over on my art station. If you want to check out some of my recent pieces, or if you want to go to my YouTube channel and uh, check out some of my recent sculpts over there uh, for, for some of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, there's not, like, one particular artist I could name, I don't think. I don't think there's, like, five particular artists I could name. Alright, let's run some sims on these ears. That is pretty sweet. Okay. I love how droopy those feel. That is awesome. Um, I want that to be a little bit more only here on this, this last bottom area. 
So it's happening a little bit too much up top. Look at that, that's so cool. Ah, oh, man. I love that, that's awesome. Okay, so there is that. So we get an idea of what that looks like. So you can see it's like uh, a little bit uneven there at the bottom. We can fill some of that in just because of the resolution of it starting to like billow out in a couple areas. The simulation stuff here is so cool. Uh, but uh, like I said, we stored a morph target. So what we can do if we want, so we can get rid of a little bit of that morph target. So I didn't, I didn't really do too much, but it helped to uh, keep it from getting super thin there. See how thin that is? We kept some of that. Uh, and we could, you know, really take that back if we wanted to, all the way to our original state. But then we start losing the uh, the whole point of getting that, you know, flat look of the ears on the surface. Uh, so yeah, we definitely want that. But yes, I love, uh, love that effect, very cool. Uh, and then, you know, I, I might just like grab my move brush, Oh, what happened up here? Did I not mask this uh, top portion? Huh. Well, that's odd. I'm not sure why that uh, became like it is up top, but luckily that's very easy for us to fix. Very odd. I think I had that masked as well. I'm not sure what happened there. I wasn't really looking at the top portion of the ears. You guys probably saw. I was not paying attention. So I'll blend those into the head a little bit later. I don't want to do that now because I have subdivs on some of this stuff. Uh, and then for the head of Mr. Doggo here, I wanted to do it for the neck. So we're gonna add some ASIM here to the dog head and then run some simulation stuff. So just some very, very slight ASIM and actually um, let me do a quick save first, just so I have a version of that that is symmetrical. Or you know what, let me save it out for two seconds. Call him, call him Doug, perfect. Diego, hello! How are you doing? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Alright. So I'm going to add a little bit of asymmetry here around the folds just with the move brush just so we get even more variation from the, um, the simulation. with the area around the eyes and nose just a little bit. I want the simulation to work on some of these areas here as well. So I'll mask off some of that. What I would like to do is mask off just this area of the eyelids and have that whole like uh, skin around the eye socket just fold in a little bit more. I think that would be cool, a cool effect. Uh, and I'm not really liking some of that super sharp transition there. So I'll just blend a little bit of that out. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, we have some geometry here. That's pretty high res. Yes, I got the Rona with that sneeze. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I think our geometry is a bit too high res for some of the simulation while streaming. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll step it down probably one step here. I don't really lose too much form there. And I don't want to freeze subdivs because that comes with its own host of other problems. So I'll just, in case we want it, we'll duplicate, make a little backup. And we'll just delete our higher subdiv. And I think we'll just increase our max, uh, max simulation points just ever so slightly. Maybe like 350 or so. All right, cool. Let's, uh, let's do some little simulations up here on these folds. Plus some cool, uh, cool cloth brushes that we can play with. You know, it's, that is, the intention, I think initially here, was to be able to use this, this tool set with cloth 
uh, to simulate fabrics and even some liquids dynamically. But I've seen people get so creative uh, with this stuff. I've seen people um, make all sorts of stuff, like using it here with like flesh to create folds of fat or just wrinkles, skin, etc. Um, I've seen people uh, use it to uh, simulate liquid, like I said, as well as like goopy slime. I've seen uh, like a, a balloon simulation as well, which was pretty cool. Uh, I think Joseph Druss does a, uh, a car crash as well, using a very rigid firmness, a high level of firmness, which I would never even think to do, but it's pretty cool. Some fun stuff there for sure. Lots of, um, Ooh, there we go. Lots of uh, variation for stuff that you can play with. All right, so I think what we'll do here is once again, store our morph target, set the direction of our gravity. Let me make sure. And actually what we could do here, I'm gonna tilt that a little bit more off, uh, just off center ever so slightly. So we get even more, um, even more asymmetry there with some of the folding and wrinkling. Let's just do a little test here. I'm gonna quick save, just in case we uh, run into any issues. Whoa! All right, so we still have collision volume on. That's not what we want. So we'll turn off collision volume. We're just doing this this piece by itself, so we don't need to recalculate. Everything else should be fine. All right. So let's just let that go to its extreme. See what that starts doing. All right, so that starts getting pretty gnarly, pretty quick. So what I like to do when it's moving a little bit too fast for me is I'll turn down the gravity strength. Uh, another thing that you can do is turn up the simulation iterations. Uh, to my knowledge, and actually they've included documentation on this now. Um, yes. So this increases the accuracy, but it will make it run quite a bit slower. I don't want to do that right now because we're not, you know, we're not trying to get something super accurate, whereas we're trying to get something a, a bit more, you know, organic. Ah, oh, that's so cool. I love that. Uh, and then I think we'll set direction this way. Run that once again. Just a little bit. Stop, stop the sim, stop the simulation. Wish we could say that out loud about this here. Stop the simulation, please. All right, so that worked pretty well. Some very cool organic forms here. I think I'll probably go over some of these just a little bit. Some of them are just, you know, a little, um, a little strong in a couple areas, like the cavity that we're getting in there. There's just a little bit of a normal softening, a little bit of relaxing with the alternative smooth algorithm. Get in there, soften some of that up. But that feels so cool. That's so much fun to just be able to play with on uh, something like this with these wrinkles. Uh, and there's so much more room for, uh, for playing around here with this dog. I'm gonna make that feel a bit more cylindrical. Get a little bit too much down there. That, like some of these shapes, like you, you can always tell. <laughs> I say, like when uh, some like cloth folds are simulated from Marvelous in the past, because people really struggle to sculpt these kind of natural forms, or like even some of these medium-sized folds, like I did in the ear. Uh, I find it very obvious when stuff is simulated. This kind of folding. It's really hard to sculpt if you're not used to doing it, and using masks can be a really great way to uh, to get some of that. Or using the uh, tube of geometry that I showed you guys earlier, that's also a really nice way to start heading in that direction. So those are, those are some techniques if you don't have simulation tool set like this. Uh, Goldie, what's going on? Welcome. Oh gosh, we are really close to running out of time here, and we got another stream coming up very soon. So we'll do a little bit more playing here. We, I don't think we're gonna have time to play with the uh, the cloth brushes tonight. But uh, thank you guys for coming and hanging out. We got we got a little bit longer. I'm not going yet. But thank you still. Either way, making sure I'm catching up on chat here. Night Shadow, what's going on? Welcome back. 
the dog from the old Disney movie where it gets stuck with needles. Is that Homeward Bound or Fox and the Hound? Fox and the Hound, Homeward Bound? One of those. How do you decide when to use subdivs or Dynamesh or Ziri Mesher? Well, lucky for you if you go over to YouTube slash Follygoon here and search any of those sick terms, you'll find nothing because I spelled Remesher incorrectly. Z Remesher or Dynamesh? Ooh, which one? What's the one? Uh, instead of taking eight minutes here during our end of our stream here, I will instead send you this very, very good link for you to find out for yourself. Uh, there's some good info in there, though. Um, it really comes down to a lot of different things, though. But that should get you heading in the right direction. Yeah, a little Bloodhound here. A little uh, Disney-esque. You'll have to check out Janiac Draws over on ArtStation or Instagram for some more of her stuff. So I wanted to really quick here, with the last little bit of our time, I wanted to see what would happen. Oh, you know what? Here, we'll do... Uh, I'll just invert my mask. I'll start here. I just want to see... See what we can get here with some of this. So all the places that I really want affected by gravity a little bit, I'm going to mask. And a, let's let's just like get this whole bottom area, and I'm blurring that mask really strongly as well. And then we're inverting our mask. All right, <laughs> I'm excited. All right, let's turn on perspective. I always like to do a quick save before I run a sim, just because sometimes it starts running and I can't get it to stop. And, oh, such a droopy boy. Such a droopy, droopy boy. <laughs> Very quickly became a little bit too droopy, started falling apart. Um, let's undo that. Let's, uh, let's mask this area a little bit more. Oh, we'll turn off. Uh, symmetry there. I love how how doofy some of this stuff gets with the uh, the simulations really quick. It's pretty funny. Um, and then, you know, there's some weird pinching happening up here, and I think that was from the star and the topology in those corners. Not really sure. Uh, let's set... Here, I'll set the direction, make sure that's going the right way. Hmm... I might do like a little bit of inflate. I had it on two earlier. We'll try like one. All right, I just want to see kind of the extreme here of this. And honestly, I should probably be doing this uh, this top area and the lower kind of jowl area separately. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I kind of like this. Uh, I'd probably have to re-sculpt some of this form around here. There's some fun stuff going on there. Like, this stuff is so much fun to play around with. Like, there's some really cool effects that you can get there. I wanted to, uh, mainly just make that a bit more, um, a bit more droopy around this area. Just ever so slightly, not too much. So we'll hold off on the, uh, the flattening of the jowls there. And we'll just focus on this area. Oops. Really make sure that we're not getting the eye. All right, one more quick one. Just for like five seconds. Oh, come on, there we go. It's not always super responsive to hitting that escape key. So that's also another great reason to store a morph target kind of fade between those. But yeah, just like that that amount of extra, you know, form there pushing forward against the, the weight feels so cool. I love that stuff. Ah, and get, using just a little bit of inflate as well helps to get that feeling a bit more rounded there. Awesome. Well, uh, we're pretty much out of time here. So thank you everybody for coming and hanging out during our stream. Appreciate y'all coming, hanging out for a little bit. 
created a little snake dog here. <laughs> I didn't I didn't think we would have enough time and we didn't to do the uh, the entire the entire pupper pupper douche here. But we had fun working on the uh, the head. And we also got to play around with some dynamic stuff. The dynamic sim stuff is always so much fun to play around with. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it, maybe learned something new along the way. Uh, again, my name is Ben, uh, uh, or Folygon, that's not my name, but that's my uh, my handle, as they say, where you can uh, find me on the Goog. So check out my YouTube channel, released a new video a few days ago, or five days ago now, uh, kind of showing my process sculpting a character from beginning to end on this witty thief character, which was a ton of fun, collabing with Chelsea Gracie. Uh, if you guys want to check out any of my custom brushes, materials, uh, or courses, you can check out gumroad.com slash Folygon. I'll throw a link in here for chat for you guys, if you guys want to grab any of those. Or if you're interested in my course, uh, you can check out appeal.academy for my uh, course and mentorship program. Uh, personal mentorship program, which is kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing. So you can go there, learn more about that, if that sounds interesting to you. Uh, and then of course, also check out Janiac Draws uh, for some more cute doggos. If you guys are interested in some cool character, uh, little puppies to uh, use as reference to uh, create some cool sculptures here in ZBrush like we did tonight during our stream. Uh, and I think that's it. I think that's all the things that I say. Uh, stick around though, because there's another streamer coming up right after me. Uh, I'm not sure exactly who. Let's find out really quick. Let's see who's streaming. ZBrush Live. Let's see who's coming up next. We can we can say hello to them if they're watching. They're like, Farligon, get off the stream. It's my turn. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Where is the... Where is the schedule? I don't see the schedule. I'm sorry. I don't know who's next. I don't see the schedule. The uh, the website looks like it's outdated. Oh well, I apologize. All right. Well, stick around. Like I said, there's gonna be another streamer right after me. You guys have a fantastic rest of your night. Checking, uh, check me out on YouTube, Polygon, and uh, yeah, cool. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.